Sorry, I went to set up my iPad so that I'm reading comments on the iPad for today's live and uh, so that I can see what's going on without having to come right up to you <laughs> like this. Um, happy Saturday. It's um, an absolutely gorgeous day out there. Um, the sun is pretty blind actually. Um, I'm still struggling to find the right place to do the lives from um, and maybe by week three of this uh, kind of series we will have sorted that out um, but I'm just going to avoid looking up to that corner because the sun is blaring in. Um, great, I have comments coming there. Um, yeah, I bet you it's freezing. Well, it's absolutely freezing where we are um, but thankfully the sun is out and uh, that's making things a little bit brighter and uh, more manageable. I am completely wrapped up um, but I'm sure I'll warm up when I've had a chance to get going and get talking. I have been running around a little bit because we have today I printed off your questions um, and more came in since this but we had to kind of do a little cut off I think because there was only so much that I could prepare um, so rather than running around the shop hello whoever who's ever ringing I'm sorry about that um hi Grace hi everybody um the uh bright and cold and draw had a, there you go Patricia lives up near us hi Patricia um yeah we had to do a cut off because instead of maybe bringing the camera around the shop which sometimes on the live the video quality isn't super for that um what i wanted to do was kind of bring together a couple of options and show them to you on a steady camera in one place um so that's the plan for today but do keep sending in your questions uh comments on this live uh underneath our grid posts and stuff like that and uh, the lovely sarah is going to collect them for next week um, and if there's enough to deal with, we'll, we'll sort all of those, or we might even record some videos, maybe not this week, during the week. Sometimes I'm just trying to get a little bit of time to, to come back in here because, because homeschool. Um, there was one query uh, on the list, which was about uh, using interchangeable circular needles and the different types. Um, and I want to do a separate thing, get the camera set up top down and go through the options that we have here in the shop. So that should be a separate video that'll come soon. So who was that? That was um, Kelly Green Lizzie. So Kelly Green Lizzie, we will be getting back to you on that one because I think that's um, a video in itself. Um, and there was also, yeah, there was a couple of questions by direct message during the week as well that have given me some ideas for some separate little kind of talking tutorials <laughs> rather than um, demonstrating specific knitting or crochet techniques. Um, yeah, you can tell I like to talk, right? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, questions about swatches, different things like that. So anyway, for today, um, hello from Ballsbridge. Hello, not too far away. Hope you're doing okay. Um, if you're joining us, shout out where you're joining us from. It's always lovely to see uh, who's out there uh, under our lockdown restrictions. It's just great to get the chance to connect um, as we've been doing. Um, I will jump right in, I think. Interested to join the circular needling. Yes. Okay, they, they're, they're, they're great, but they, they can be a bit of a mystery, I think, if you haven't used them before. So we can break down um, what there's little different tips and tricks and things that you can use them for as well that you might not think about. So uh, we'll do that. Um, number one, I like this one. Somebody asked for um, suggestions for Andrea Mary's stripes sweater. Um, and <laughs> like I could have gone around the shop all day um, because there's loads. What she's done, the striped sweater, her one of the examples, she's done like a two color one and one of the examples where it's all multicolor. I think I was counting nine colors in it. Uh, but uh, she was saying, uh, obviously, just kind of you can play around with it. Uh, you can. It's a sport weight sweater, but it's also she was suggesting using lace weight doubled as well. So it is one of those ones where you can obviously pick and choose from your stash and mix some things in. Um, and I just went a bit mad, basically going around the shop in the last hour, kind of going, "Ooh, what would look nice?" Um, so a few different options, and this is for. Who asked for this? Knitting Pink. Hello Knitting Pink. We'll give you a shout out in the comments after this just in case you didn't get a chance to join. Um, so you will make sure to get your answers to your question which was suggestions for striped, uh, Andrea Mary's striped sweater. So, um, oops, number one. Um, hello from Dublin, Danny Brook. Oh loads of local people today, it's great. Um, that was very, that was very Irish accent-y of me. Um, right, so number one, one of my favourite kind of colour ranges in sport weight that we have is uh, Carol Feller's Nua Worsted. I'm going to try and balance everything here. Um, Carol Feller's Nua Sport. She has Sport and Worsted. Um, and 
it's just such a really nice um, range for neutrals and then some brights and things just to pop. So when I was looking at Andrea's own color combinations, I was inspired by these guys here. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. I feel like there's a seventh there because I was trying to pick a... There is, isn't there? Where's the guy? Oh, he's hiding. Um, sorry about that. Um, so I was trying to pick an uneven number of shades because I think that would work really nicely in that sweater. So you can play around with all of those, but you can see there's some kind of bluey greys and a more neutral, I think that's bare necessities as well. And these ones would pop out beautifully in that. So that was one of the options. I was very smart. I got a basket right at my feet so I can throw everything into it <laughs> this week and then I can tidy up faster. Um, so that's number one. So sport weight Andrea Mary sweater. But also, I think this is where the seventh was going, was about mixing in the texture of holding a lace weight doubled. So one of these guys, another little neutral, which is Midnight Sol from Camarose. Or you could have gone with a light blue mixed in as well. Um, so you can have a lot of fun with it. So that was one of the options, either new a sport by itself or mixing in a little bit of those guys held double. Um, whoops, and they go. The other was in the basket that's further away. Hang on. And she's back. Uh, so the other one was, I thought about just um, an easy care, kind of simple, more neutral, classic, possibly a sort of seaside sailory vibe, actually. And it is a five color combo in, this one's kind of like a petroly teal. So this was what I was hoping would just sort of set off all the other ones. Um, and that is in Mondial Cashmaretti Gold, which is a really nice kind of soft, well-balanced, uh, easy to knit with, easy care yarn. Um, and that was a five color combination that I thought would work really nicely. I mean, you could go, do, do, do. you could just go super neutral and do twos like those guys as well. Okay, so that's another sport weight that we have and they're getting thrown on the, in the basket on the floor. But let's say you had some colors in your stash um, that went with some of the color changing yarns that we have so this one will knit up kind of you'll get a batch of blue and a batch of purple a batch of the more stony aqua teals there and you could actually just mix it with let's say a semi-solid i bring that up a bit closer a semi-solid hand dyed so that's let's see we'll slow down a bit so this is the kremka in the mood and it's the color, no, it's not joy. I thought it was color curiosity. Um, and then you could pair it with some of those other colors being picked up, but that's not gonna look like that sandwiched in between here and here. You're gonna get one of those colors or maybe one and a half and then it'll change and then it'll change and it'll actually grade throughout the, throughout the sweater. And I thought that could be a really nice option. And if you want some texture, you could hold Abbey Lace doubled that's Abbey Lace in luck. Okay, so they were my three main broad, broad suggestions for Andrea Mary stripes. Um, if you like any of those and want any more details on any of those, just let us know um, in the comments as well, and we will get back to you. Um, question. I hope that answered the question. I hope that was good. I was trying to get a, a range of things from across the shop. Um, so interchangeable needles, reminder thing in the wiggy. Yeah, I'll do the reminder thing in the uh, every week for this so we can all check in. Uh, macrame cord, I can do that very quickly. Somebody just wanted to see the new um, Katia macrame cord, which is over there. Hang on. Oh, it's heavy. It's actually really heavy. <laughs> these are, I think these are 500 gram cord um so there was just we've been stocking the rico um creative cotton cord for a little while but the catty range has got more colors in it so we've added those in i think it's a slightly different thickness as well so this is made with some recycled materials too and they're all up on the website as well i'm worried that's going to make too much noise if i drop it um so we've got some purples 
you got some this is actually this I had six more shades like this it's just all I could fit in my arms um but it's nice it's really structured it's good and I will learn macrame uh this year I think <laughs> um she says confidently uh so there's they're all up on the website now they were added during the week and yes I did see Nancy was asking about the uh mini the mini skeins of sock yarn from Katia it's Katia United Socks um, and they are 25 gram balls and I took a few photos of them earlier on and I will share them with you. How much is a Macaway? Could one of the, the this is the team that are on there do you mind checking? I think, was it about 12 euro, I think. Um, but Nancy was wondering about the price of that. So would you mind letting her know? That'd be great. Um, <sighs> okay, chill. Right, how's everybody? Um, let me see. Oh, the sun is coming around. That's not too bad, I can see now. Thanks, Sarah says, the macrame cord is 12 euro 50. Thank you, Sarah. What's that bright peach behind me? This one? This one up here is called Peach Marguerite and it is in Pool Bag Sport, um, which uh, it's, yeah, it's great. Peach Marguerite looks really lovely with Bonfire, with um, Bonfire and, was it Embers that we've used it with before? Yeah, it looks, it's it's super, it just gives that pop. Um, I, it's not that, it's not that weight of yarn. I'm just gonna see if I have a sample. Actually, this time at the end, I'll see if I can find the peach marguerite sample. It might not be here at the moment, but it's gorgeous. Can we see the colors of the other new sock wool that we got in? And see, the, the United socks. I'll wait for that. We just got one new sock wool in from Katia. So, um, but I will, I have photos of it and I'll put them up on stories after this. Um, okay, let's see. Next one. So, where did it Right, so last week uh, we were talking about um, this guy. No, there's all my baskets and stuff. Right, so that is a Lip Magnolia chunky cardigan. I love that. I'm adoring bright yarns as well. They're just so much more fun to knit with, right? Um, so that's the Magnolia Chunky Cardigan knit in the very bright um, townhouse yarns occur in Drury Decay and uh, Abbey Lace. So it's two strands of Abbey Lace held together with Drury Decay. Um, and Jenny has, okay, so townhouse yarns has the cheek to have the peach marguerite sample, but it's there. Maybe if you could put a picture of it up on your stories as well, Jen. Um, the do, do, do. and we talked about sorry here I am Cama Rose our delivery arrived hooray um it made it to us it took a little um little rest in Germany for about four days um on its way here but it arrived and we have made the kits for the Magnolia Chunky Cardigan that I was talking to you about last week and I have spent the week um, the best I can do is swatching I think at the moment rather than making full things but Again, home school. Um, so this was the color, or uh, one of the colors. There's five combinations now up on the website and I might see if I can make some more uh, during this week. Um, so this, these are the coral options and I swatched it and it works. It's great. Um, and here is how it looks. It's so, 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 so pretty super springy cardigan um springy jacket i think more than anything else because um it does um let's sort of nicely structured and you can wear it as long as it's not lashing lashing rain out um then it i think that works really well as a layer because spring is coming yes it is yes um so if you're interested in those uh we have all the different sizes you can choose to get the the yarn with the pattern yarn combinations with the pattern or without the pattern if you've already if you've already have it if you've already made it or if you bought it from Ravelry um then you've got options but it's beautiful you love it um and check it out I think I just want to work at your shop okay <laughs> we we have a wonderful team I'm sorry at the moment we're not looking for anybody else but keep your eyes peeled <laughs> but thank you um so Doris Day Peach Magnolia sounds good uh da -da -da. Just in case, um, and people may not watch it all the way through. Um, we were also talking about kind of 
early brioche projects um, last week um, and I was suggesting Ramble. This keeps going dark, sorry, I keep tapping the screen because it goes dark on me. Um, so this was uh, the shawl, my first two color brioche project, um, which is uh, Ramble by Andrea Mary. And it was using townhouse yarns, Dury Decay. And you do need two skeins of each, but you then, I was so organized, have enough yarn left over, um, or almost enough yarn make left over for like other projects like a hat as well. In this case, I didn't quite make it and had to put in a little <laughs> a feature stripe, which actually I quite like. Um, so just in case people are asking about that, my colors were Iha and another color that's not in stock right now. Oh, Jenny might know the uh, might know the answer to that. Um, oh, I'm sure I knew that before. Okay, I'm gonna forget one very obvious thing at least once every week. Okay, this is the deal. Last week I forgot what a collar was called on a neckline of a sweater. <laughs> so you know, uh, forgetting the forgetting the color number or color name of this is uh, is okay for today. Um, this hat is. The Rhinebeck hat? Yeah, the Rhinebeck hat um, by Woolly Wormhead. It's knit sideways using um, German short rows to make these, these fun little wedges and, um, and waves. And it is such a fun thing to make. I love it, I love it, love it. Um, ooh, somebody's doing a brioche class this weekend. Ooh, an online brioche class, class from Beardy Shield. So check it out, that'd be really good. Um, thank you, Creative Solutions. Yes, that's what it's all about. And in case anybody is asking, and this is a funny one, it is prism, thank you, Joy. The color is prism, lovely. I knew somebody would have the answer. Um, <laughs> yay. Uh, you heard, Jenny heard her name, but the kids are draining the internet. Yeah, that's gonna happen too. Um, and just in case as well, because we had loads of questions last week about the different things that I was wearing. Um, this is my love note, it's a cropped length. You can't really see it because it's going over the tunic dress here. But um, what people find really interesting is that it's these two colors. Um, knit together. So that ties nicely into one of the questions we had, which was, could you show us more examples of um, different yarns held together with lace weights? Um, so this is another love note. And it is Lady Melisandra in Town House Yarns Fade Street Fort Fly. Um, and Smoke and Mirrors. Sorry, it's a little bit of dust on that. Um, and then held together, you get this colour. Oh, a love note in that peach margarita would be deadly, I quite agree. Um, yes, so um, I will have, I've got to try and grab a few more samples from people. I think a lot of us who have made things with uh, four ply and lace weight held together or, you know, lace weight held together with the yarns have stolen them and taken them home to keep us warm <laughs> in all of this um, because I was sure and I was digging around the shop just to try and see if I had a few, a few other marled examples to show you. Oh, actually, um, the second colour, sorry, so it was Fade Street Four Ply in Lady Melisandra and then Abbey Lace in Smoke and Mirrors, Smoke and Mirrors. Um, there is a hat and I want to show you that. It just caught my eye as I was saying, I couldn't find another example. Okay, so this is the Lenny hat by Isabel Kramer lovely little detailing here um, and I ended up making um, two of them because one thing is that you could if you were buying yarn for a love note you probably depending on the size you're doing you probably have a good bit left over like I only I only used up about a quarter of the second or the yeah the second skeins for this and uh, was had enough left over to do other things I made some wrist warmers and stuff um, so uh, but other people have been making the Lenny hat as their leftovers um, and there are two options. This is uh, with bobbles. You can put little little noops or bobbles along these little lines or not. So I've made one of each. I think I gave the other one away as a present actually. Pretty sure I did. I haven't seen it in a while anyway. Um, oh no, this one's the sample in the shop and the other one's mine at home. That's what it is. Um, it is really nice. And this is going to say Utopia and sea foam. I think it's Utopia and Seafoam, but I'm going to confirm because I've got the colour down here in the pile for something else. It is nice, isn't it? I like it. Um, so that's super warm and like anything like that in the hats. Um, Jackie's made some 
book that's like that. All of the color or all of the names of things are escaping me today. Um, but I'll I'll poll everybody and ask them to leave one other sample of other marled and held together knits so we can show more next week. Because we're doing this every week for a while. Right. Um oh I didn't show you another option on the Andrea Mari stripes. Thank you, Bulls. Um, that was these guys here, which I had to put in a basket because I wanted to find one where it was nine colors. So this is uh, the Camarose Heverdags, Heverdags Sold, which is organic winter wool. Um, and it's just like in their color range, they've got so many, like it's really easy to put together a color um, palette that works so nicely together from Camarose. So, um, so that is uh, another one of the options for Andre Mary Stripes. If you want to just go for color and go for rainbows and have something, I think it'd be lovely. Just with a pair of jeans, it'd be gorgeous. Um, you seeing other people join that? I know. I know. Hi guys. Hi guys. Hi Eloise. Hi Carmen. Um, okay, lots of familiar names. It's great. Questions? I'm gonna make sure. More, 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 more. Hello. Uh, so more yarn lace combinations coming next week for Nere Christie. Um, but, but, but we had some requests for a couple of copies of Pom Pom magazine. I will get on that with our next Pom Pom book order. Um, we'll be in touch. Macrame cord we did. And I told you about the Magnolia Chunkies. That's great. Fades. This one was fun. And this is like, I come in and spend hours just playing on the shelves and then I get to show you things that I've pulled up. Um, yes, so we have two main last topics to cover for the moment and then if we still have time, which we should do, it's only 20 past one, um, then I can talk about other questions. Uh, so I see you Cressy ask, Chrissy asking about Yaku, um, remind me to come back to that. Uh, somebody wanted some advice on how to, I'll see how they, how they worded it actually because I needed to clarify this, um, doo -doo -doo. how to choose uh, gradient yarns and effectively combine them for a sweater project. So that's Heliana. Hello. Um, and there's two different, I had to just clarify, was it how to use a gradient yarn, like one that's dyed specifically to kind of fade in colors, or is it about creating your own gradients or fades? So Heliana wanted to know a little bit more about how you would go about choosing a fade. Um, so I figured the best thing to do was to go around and find a few examples of them and then talk about why they, why I think they work. Fades divide people, you know? Like one thing that you think uh, really, really works, somebody else will be going, mm -mm, nope, nope, that's not for me. Um, or there's like these divides about whether things are true fades or not. I say, if you like it, go with it, right? Jenny made um, a comfort fade cardigan in colors that really weren't, like they, they were brights and they were contrast, not, contrasty but they weren't they didn't fade into each other hi Heliana um but with the method that's used in that cardigan it just it it looked it was intentional it looked intentional and it, and it worked out really well so there's no hard and fast rules is what I'm trying to say um so but I'm gonna go in the reverse order of how I picked these things out I figured one approach put that on a shirt there's no hard and fast rules I like that um yeah one approach is to start with you know a color scheme in mind two colors one that you want to move from and to depending on your project okay um and then <laughs> it is fun you go and try and find schemes that meet in the middle okay um I should say at the end actually remind me to say there's another way of doing a fade but this is the way where it's you're using only one strand of yarn at a time and what you're trying to do is is pick colors that are going to blend nicely together when you follow a fade sequence of knitting um which is depending on the pattern it's going to be different some designers put more or less rows and and vary it up in, in different ways but they um will give you a sequence for the changeover so instead of just going from a hard line, one color to the next, you start to knit, you know, two from one skein, one from another, two, blah, 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 and move in, okay? Um, so one one, op one option was, well, how about, um, you know, I love warm goldy oranges and I want to move through to pinks and just go for those sorts of sunset-y shades. Um, and then you can kind of go and say, well, how would I get from that? This is 
Tara Forte. How do they get from that to this guy? Okay, um, and you go fluting around, <laughs> or you ask me to do it for you. Um, and then in this case, what I would do is you want to pick up some colors and some features from one scheme. I'm gonna hold it a bit closer so you can see it um, and move on to the next. So you can see they would blend really nicely together. Okay, um, so we're starting to introduce some of this pink already. Um, hi, Tara. And I'm gonna see, where did I go next? You've gone out of order on me. Um, oh yeah, so then you've got these, this lovely movie tone that gets picked up by this one. I won't be able to see your questions now, but, um, and then we're going into this one. I had to take pictures of these as well, so I can show you afterwards, because the light is being a bit funny. Oh yeah, I'll hold the mirror, that's better. And we've gotten where we want to go, which is to these blue pinks, okay? Um, so that took a little while to find the colors that were going to work. Um, don't You don't have to stick to one dyer in this instance, okay? Um, because you're not necessarily going to find all of these colors in one range in, on any one website or any one, um, in any one shelf in the shop if you're able to do that. So so you can mix and blend uh, your, just try and make sure obviously they're all the same weight and similar fiber content construction. Um, so that was one where it was like, okay, well, let's go for dusky sunset-y um, shades and make sure that you're just gradually picking up at least kind of one feature color as you move across. Okay, so that was one. Um, making my pile of yarn is getting bigger. Um, I think this guy works as well. Obviously, if you've got speckles in the yarn, that really helps too, because it gives you more to build on. Um, but I used these guys in Fade Street. Um, so Fade Street 4 apply, that's Oasis. Going to Cupcake, to Eden, Utopia. That's the color. Utopia is the one that I did the Lenny hat in. And uh, Dreams of Paradise there. So that was just if you wanted a little bit more pastel and there are tons I mean this is a, all of what the ones I picked out are five skein fades um but there are tons and tons and tons of shawls sweaters you know it like accessories socks and everything out there using fades like this but it, these are all four plies that I've chosen today as well so you will be spoiled for choice in patterns if you like uh any of these you can play around with um so that was that one and then the final fade that I chose today just checking that they're in the right order before I pick them up. I think this is right, yeah. And you may not stick to the same order that you that you initially thought they were going to go in either sometimes. Um, but yeah, pick your, uh, it is, as I say, no hard and fast rules. So this was Olin Socklight Underwater Ballet. And then you can see that we picked up the kind of peachy pinky tones, some of these bronzes going into this guy, which is Gosh. And similarly, again, sorry, you can see there's the yellows, the peaches are being built into um, boom, 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 Kismet. Onwards, this is hard to do. <laughs> Onwards, yellows and yellows and yellows into Ritual, building up. I'm gonna sit down for next time and have the stuff in front of me. Uh, and into crop, 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 crop. Um, so again, I'll put some pictures of these. And, and actually this is something that I think Carmen was saying um, of a yarn story last week on one of her um, stories, which was open out the skeins and have a look because you'll find things like hidden underneath labels and features of the yarn that you, you know, hand dyeing is such a uh, a random process okay so you're not going to find like a consistency of all the colors through it just from the outside of the skein that you can see okay so i mean i know the i'm very confident that these will work but if you're struggling um with some of the stuff in your stash um open open them all out lay them out on your table um, and keep 
keep playing with the orders because sometimes just physically moving them you start to see the colors in a different light okay that often happens sometimes yarn shop insider tip here um where we have some colors up on the wall um and something might not be selling very well but it's a color that we know is like it's gorgeous and we love it it just happens that it's sitting next to something that does it no favors <laughs> and just you know just doesn't let it shine in the way it should so every now and again we just basically ask jenny to come in here and sort all of that out because she does an amazing yarn display i have to say um they look amazing against my well, i could i would love to do a big giant fady blankety comforty shawl thing because that just feels like the right type of project for this moment for sure we're all into the schlankets like a shawly blankets at the moment um so i hope that helped i know it's sort of kind of presenting you with solutions but some of that um hopefully is useful for um picking out colors for yourself uh in the future helia thank you thank you very much for asking questions um and and as i say i can't get to all the questions every week but definitely there's going to be if you have that question there's so many other people who are interested in the answer too so um i hope that helped other people as well now uh we're flying along i probably could have kept yeah i was gonna say could i have taken more questions but the thing is the time is the preparation and the grabbing of everything uh in the morning i did want to show you um i'm a little wary so like i did make a bit of a mess i can take you around a little bit and i think people want to see a few more bits so we can do that um <clears throat> oh yeah the thank you the ramble my earlier ramble sweater or my ramble shawl that i was showing you so although we don't have the other color that i the contrast color that i used we do have the dury decay in eha and you could mix that with cupcake if you wanted that would make a beautiful brioche design um or dazzle as well if you wanted something more blue um are we shipping to the uk we aren't right at this moment but we're hoping to have that resolved I'm really hoping next week. So um, in order to comply with the rules, we've got to get um, the UK VAT number and our accountant is getting that sorted just a bit slowly because there's so much fallout from Brexit um, that uh, yeah, it's the, the, a bit of a, a bit of a queue obviously for her time and for um, getting getting registered. So um, sorry about that. <laughs> like that I, I really wish there was more we could be doing um, on that front. Um, but when we get that sorted, we will sing it from the rooftops. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. Yeah. So we just got one or two little fun bits that I wanted to show you just um, two little fun bits because, uh, yeah, it's not Christmas Christmas anymore, but you can still treat yourself, right? 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 <laughs> okay. So um, something we haven't had for a good while, but we've been want wanting to find is really nice proper yarn bowls. So this is just one of the designs, but there's two new yarn bowl designs up on the website um, as of yesterday, I think, maybe, or the day before they got landed in. So um, if you're in, uh, in the mood for a yarn bowl, then uh, we've got two options there. And look, they, they are so cute. This is the most adorable little pair of snips of scissors ever seen in my life they are the titchiest little gorgeous -y things so they have a little gift box like this um uh, a little leather pouch for them and they're spring loaded and they're made by um a company that's based in japan that where they make swords so they make little tiny scissors <laughs> Like this so um i don't have the prices off the top of my head i'm so sorry um but if you pop on to the website and have a look in the news and faqs is where the new arrivals section is um underneath or one of the big buttons on the home page takes you to the new arrivals um so you can pop on and have a little look like that or if any of the other girls that are on have a chance just to check that out then we can let you know um but they're they are a definite little little treat and i just want them to my bag because this is minimalist accessories right so you don't need a massive scissors in your bag this one thread snips um so that is all of that i think for the moment um i do 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 I don't have all of the lights on, so just, um, I got one of my, my soft ones, they are wonderfully cute. Yeah, so the yarn bowls are 43.95 and 42.95, thank you, Sarah. And I think the snips are, 
or 16 or 17 maybe she'll find a picture I got her yeah um so let's have a little look at somebody wants to see Katia socks hang on I'll turn you around and take you out of here um, we are waiting on a few more deliveries so some of the shelves are still a bit bare but just that's just because we're only operating online at the moment um and so we're not too bothered about filling things up too much right so Katia snips are 18.95 thanks um so this is the Katia in the United Socks little 25 gram balls of loads of different colors and they say they're for socks lovers um does anybody follow sweet Sabina on Instagram if you don't you should because um she does the prettiest little rainbow socks um I've ever seen just all of her feet is just so full of color um so they are all of those and there is a little booklet of you see a yeah, booklet have different ideas and stuff so they can go in with your order if you want to pick up any of those the 25 gram balls um the where did I put them hold on <laughs> I'm trying to move over some of the the bits so these are some of the other colors of the macrame cord I pulled out or they're the colors that I didn't get to show you and uh let's see what else um buttons I'm waiting on more buttons but we'll get talking about those soon um ba -ba 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 -ba. all of our lovely Katia got restocked all of the chunky chunkies and the super merinos and big merinos and super merinos and these are more the look at that pink the Mandel Cashmeretti gold that gap came back in I think that was it there is another yarn <clears throat> well there's another few yarns that are coming um, but the shipment got it split up a little bit, so we can save that till next week, I think. I think. Right. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I need some water. Now, somebody else asked a question, sorry, that I said I would get back to. What was that? Let me see. I'm going to scroll back now. Let's see. There's a reason I got this out. Starter sock patterns, please. Um, Tin Can Knits, is it Rye? Your Rye socks, I think, are is a great starter because they've got um, all of their lovely tutorials that go with that. So if you go onto their um, website, it's Tin Can Knits on, under the Simple Collection. That tends to be the one that we um, advise people to check out. Um, opening up the scenes help. Pictures. With the Camilla Chunky to hold more dough. Yes. So uh, for the Magnolia Chunky cardigan, it is uh, one strand of Heverdag sold with two strands of Midnight Sol, uh in the Camarose range. Um, so, but that's all calculated into the kits that we've done. So um, it is uh, held doubled all the way through. So you're using three strands of yarn together. Um, really not that much of a big deal once you get used to, once you've done the cast on and everything like that, it's totally fine. Um, because you are using them all in the one go. And they're not like somebody asked last week about did they get tangled, but it's actually, it's less less of an issue when you're holding the yarns all together. Um, as when you're trying to do stranded colour work and tangled in that is uh, more likely. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, da, da, da. Somebody else would like to know how to select the proper yarn for the right project. Um, yes, <laughs> that's a, that's a, there's three things that you need to, to line up for when you're beginning a new project. Okay, so it's the pattern, the needle size and the yarn itself. And what you want to like depend you can start with any of those you can say right well i only have seven millimeter needles they're the ones that i have and i don't want to buy new ones or i just want to try another project on this so if that's your starting point you've got to go ahead and find a pattern that calls for seven millimeter needles we'll get into tension later but um and a yarn that specifies on the ball band please use seven millimeter needles with me um if it's a case of oh, you've wandered into a shop or you've bought something online and you're going oh my goodness um i just bought this like you know 
pale blue angora <laughs> yarn just because I love the look of it. Um, then again, take a look at the ball band, see what yarn or see what needle size is recommended. Um, have a look at uh, the tension on the ball band. So which um, it's just kind of a universal measure of how much fabric you're going to get for every number of stitches made on with that yarn on that recommended needle size. So unless you find a pattern that calls for that same number, you're going to get things basically coming out far too small or far too big. Um, like in my first hat that I ever made that was not a hat. I followed all of the instructions very faithfully, but had no concept about the, needing the right needles uh, or needing the right size yarn. And it was the size of a little coin purse. Okay, so it just it just didn't it did not work out at all. Um, so just make sure um, that those three things all line up is kind of the quick advice that I can give. Um, and if anybody else has any suggestions or tips for beginners, please do pop them in the comments as well. Um, Nancy was asking about Happy Textiles. We don't have that um, kind of on our on our queue or wish list just at the moment, but if more people are looking for it, let us know. Um, so particularly some of the um, the, speci the specific ranges in Habu, let us know. It sounds complicated. Um, it's n it's not too bad once you get into it. Um, I, I really wish that things were not the way they are and that we could um, give people like, you know, welcome you in and like show us what you've got and we'll help you um, align that, that those three things. Um, you can send us an email. We'll, we'll get through to you as soon as we can uh, on that. So, um, text girls. Can Yaku, ah, oh, there we are, that was one. Can Yaku be used for a cardigan? Absolutely, yeah. So Yaku is from Camera Rose and it is a four ply fingering, four ply fingering weight, um, merino wool, beautifully soft. It's really, really nice. Um, and just, yeah, I mean, we've been talking a lot about blending and mixing yarns, um, like holding a couple, numerous strands together and stuff but yaku by itself 100 percent. but it, you know again finding a four ply pattern obviously to use it with so um but n no reason why not it's gorgeous uh, da -da. and the hat ten house is there alpaca mix an alpaca to mix for love notes yeah so this is again something that we were saying last week which was um instead of the Abbey Lace or the Kid Seta, which are mohair based floofs, if you want to get the fuzzy, fuzzy finish. And um, then we were recommending the, there's two from Camarose, one is Midnight Sol and the other is Manastrale. And the Manastrale has a bit of glitter in it, which is great. Um, that they would be lovely as your, your second yarn in a love note, um, if you wanted to do that. Um, and did I see somebody else asking about, I'm going to need some water, stop talking. Um, do, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to make you just look at the top of my head for ages, so, um, Curious Handmade has a sock society, whole websites dedicated to socks, yeah, there's, like, um, as, there's so much inspiration out there, there are so many different ways to, to, to approach sock knitting as well, like, we, we were talking about Magic Loop versus Double, pointed needles, there's toe up, there's cuff down, and everybody's going to have their own preference as well. But remember what we said earlier on, there are no rules. Don't listen to anybody who tells you that you have to do it in one specific way. Um, find, try out, like get some spare yarn and try out knitting on double pointed needles and then try out using magic loop technique and see what sits best with you. Um, just what makes, makes your brain happier as you're doing it. Um, definitely. So, Oh yeah, and then sorry, somebody else is asking the yarn and the colour for my love note. It's Fade Street in Lady Melisandra and Abbey Lace in Smoke and Mirrors. Um, beautiful. And somebody else is using Yaku with Olan. That's gorgeous. That's a really nice combination. Exit. Okay, knit all the socks. Yes, Ash, knit all the socks. <laughs> That's Ash. Ashling is just sock knitter extraordinaire, so... Um, if you've got any other advice for sock knitters, let us know. I have no double point needles, but I want to try them. Which size would you recommend that you get? Um, it depends on the types of projects that you are making. 
most at the moment. If you want to make socks and if you want them to be socks that are going to go like in your shoes to go out and go shopping in or whatever, um, then it would be, I think 2.5 is a good middle of the road uh, sock yarn one. Uh, some people would make just slipper socks for being around at home and you could use like Aran weight yarn and four millimeter double pointed needles for that. Um, if you're generally making hats or mittens and stuff like that, again, look at the weights of yarns, the thicknesses of yarns that you have in your available to you at the moment in your stash um, and what needle size they recommend um, and then go from there. So a simple little tubed pair of wrist warmers is a great first double pointed needle project if you wanted to try those out or you can make your hats on double pointed needles as well. Um, I'm just going to grab a tiny bit of water because there's still more questions coming. Hang on. There should be hold music or something. Oh, I couldn't remember where I left it even. Um, sorry. Okay. Any tips? for using circular needles. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, I saw that come through. I don't know why it wasn't on my printout. Um, Cause you did ask that question from Claire to here. Uh, circular needles that are slightly too long. Okay, slightly too long is kind of, yeah, not the best position to be on because if they're extra long, you can do as Marion G1 said, um, magic loop technique. Um, you might be able to, to still do magic loop technique and just squish your stitches uh, back down as well. But you're definitely gonna have to pull out that cord in some way. Um, and hopefully it's a flexible cord because if you've got, um, what is it, it's like the, the plastic kind of, the stiffer plastic cords, they don't, uh, they don't do magic loop as well as a more flexible nylon cord um, or the sort of stainless steel cables of Chagu. Um, so, and I know this, again, these are tales of Lisa's woe from early knitting career. Um, in addition to the, the coin purse, um, I tried doing magic leap on um, circular needles that were the grey aluminium ones with the, t with the tough, um, tough plastic cord and ended up kind of giving myself sort of neck and shoulder strain from that. So, um, but definitely have a look at tutorials for magic leap technique. Um, the, it kind of, it really does free you up in terms of your, your flexibility with the needles that you do have. Sorry for the pun. Um, because for like example, things like making hats in the round where uh, a pattern might say, okay, start off using a 40 centimeter circular. And then when you reduce down your number of stitches, switch over to double pointed needles. So you're using two sets of needles for one project. If you're using magic loop, you can just use the 100 centimeter circular needle, do magic loop for the whole thing. Um, and you're not having to, to switch over. So, so that's good. Um, but yeah, a longer cable is easier to work with if you're gonna do magic loop. Um, okay, so hopefully that's helpful. Everybody, a lot of magic loop fans in the comments today, which is good. Um, again, put, you know, 100 knitters in a room. Oh God, put 100 of anybody in a room at the moment. Um, and you'd find like, you know, there's just gonna be a hard DPN camp and a hard magic loop camp, but figure out what works for you there. Um, cool. Okay. Then I don't think I had anything else that I wanted to talk about today. You always magic loop the last rounds on your forties. Do you? I guess like, there's no reason why you couldn't. I just think it would drive me a bit mad. <laughs> You'll have to tell me, Louise, which, um, which circulars you're using. Um, oh yeah. Uh, and sorry for other people um, on the sort of different types, too lazy to get, yeah, okay, fine. You know what you're at, that's grand. Um, the other one, uh, the additional option, because we should introduce it, um, in, like, so you've got for your socks or your wrist warmers, you've got your DPNs, your magic loop, and then you've also got, yeah, chagu. you got these tiny little 23 centimeter, nine inch circulars that a lot of people are using now for um, for socks and sleeves and things so you're not you don't have to go down um, the road of kind of transitioning between needles at all so um, they it depends on your style of knitting 
because they're quite they're quite teeny um so if you're someone who likes to re like rest all of your hand underneath the needle or anything like that with these guys you're sort of kind of knitting on the inside <laughs> if you know what i mean but there's people who swear by them i haven't actually tried the chaga ones which is being a terrible uh researcher basically but um i know a lot of people do uh, get on really well with them will we ever do a knitting circle live uh yeah yeah we've done a couple of zooms um just haven't managed to kind of get them back up and running since the new year but um yeah there was more that we could do in the previous lockdown uh because of being the kids still being in school and it's a little bit more difficult at the moment but um we will do uh yeah i think there, there should be a zoom coming up soon um yeah before rather than straight um yeah circular needles generally just uh, are easier as well on your on your hands and your shoulders and things like that i think we definitely recommend them even when you're knitting straight pieces um just the fact that they'll curve down and take the weight of your project and stuff so you're still just going over and back but um you're not lifting the whole weight of your project so if you've got any issues with your wrists and arms and stuff like that then they we definitely recommend those okay knitting circle sounds nice yes it is it's good to get together so um we will work on that i will have a chat with the with the team and stuff and see who might be free to do it um and i don't think i'll be able to do it like i use my evenings during the week after the kids are in bed to uh do admin <laughs> and ordering and working and all that sort of stuff so but if some of the other guys want to um run some of that then we can do it um there are also those triangular shape ones. Oh yeah, um, yes, the flexible VPNs as well. So look, they're coming up with new things all the time, which is great. Um, and two circulars, <laughs> yeah. So many, many, many ways to knit in the round um, and lots of information out there. So they, like experiment away and see how you get on. And uh, there's loads of advice and stuff here, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, so uh, we will have a couple of other things coming up um, over the next while. I actually don't want to tease anything at the moment, but there are some plans about some more um, community orient orientated bits that we're going to be doing. Um, so do stay tuned for that. Um, I'm losing my voice, so I'm going to say thank you to everybody for joining today. Um, and we will see you next week. Um, I will be gathering some of the questions that we didn't get to today and other ones that have come in since and we will work on uh coming with more suggestions to you a little bit more fun and interesting stuff to have a chat about um thank you and enjoy the rest of your saturday take care Bye.